<laughs> be nice, Kato. <laughs> wow, okay, we're on the air. It looks like everything looks good. Let's see if this translates up here. Let me pop out this chat, make sure that's looking. It's on to see myself twice. Cue the music. Yeah, I need it. You know, I have, I can play a little bit. <laughs> Look, give me one second. Let's see something here. Um, let's see. Uh, I wasn't really super prepared, but oh, there goes a, there goes an old, uh, there goes an old, uh, Something back there. Let's break out the old Martin, shall we? <laughs> oh, man, how about that? <laughs> see me because I just was just noodling. <laughs> How about that? Well, thanks for stopping by, fellas. Uh, thanks to the Scotch for Dummies for uh, doing the uh, show uh, good as usual. And uh, yeah, that's one thing uh, I have to congratulate Mike on is doing a successful blend. That's not easy to do. Um, I can imagine getting really into the fine tune recipes. I mean, I've done some of my own... Uh, just a little dot of sherry, like real PX sherry or Oloroso in a, you know, blend of like, you know, 60, 40% of something, but nothing uh, where you get down to five, six different, like, um, you know, combinations of the things and all that. So, but uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a craft and I commend like people like John Glazer from Compass Box from doing that kind of thing. You know, it's not, not an easy, Deal and uh, the ones I've had from those guys, especially, are pretty damn good. I have to say, we're gonna take a look at something a little different. I'm not sure if he's in. I don't think he's here tonight. Uh, haven't seen uh, Paul in a little while. Uh, we uh, kind of wrapped our tasting um, tour for all the Scotch distilleries up. Uh, we're all kind of catching up, trying to get this last round uh, reviewed and whatnot. And I, I, there's two uh, offerings that he sent that I thought, you know, this actually might combine nicely for a show, uh, something kind of off the wall and different. And I do plan on still doing some like four and five minute reviews on more accessible core range stuff like your Ardbeg 10s and Lefroig 10s and Lagavulin 16s and, and that kind of thing. But for this, uh, for the long Form show. I'm thinking I'm going to keep it to like some harder to find, uh, just strange findings, maybe, you know, rare bottlings, things like that, just in case you do run across it, see if, uh, if it's worth a try or if it's one of those things where it's a little higher than what you're normally going to want to spend. At least you have myself and a couple other my friends that probably have reviewed it to, um, Give you a good, you know, scoop before you shell out the hundreds of dollars on, on something. The first one we're going to look at is um, a Glenfiddich of, of all things. And I, it's funny, I don't think I've ever reviewed a Glenfiddich to this point uh, formally. I have had some reviews on Distiller that I've written for like the 12, which was, you know, a decent entry level dram. Not, not bad. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't order it outside of a bar probably i wouldn't like go out, out of my way to get that bottle for the house but the solera 15 I, I actually would buy a bottle of that that's pretty good stuff um those are the two that come to mind off the bat that i know i have had i've probably have had others as well but um, this is different this is going to be the glenfiddich select cask it's a travel retail exclusive and um it's only 40 percent abv which is kind of makes me a little nervous and it is chill filtered and there's coloring at it so that's the iffy part the good news is though that doesn't really mean it's going to be horrible or it's going to taste bad 
And I don't think this is a pricey bottle. I have to see what uh, um, what the deal is. Oh, sorry. A sample of lymphatic on the label. It says for window cleaning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Hoagie, you're so mean. That's funny. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've, I've heard mixed reactions to that. Of, to this particular dram also now this is going to be interesting because i've only seen two reviews of this this is a specific a tamdu dalbili dram and uh it's 62.1 percent hot as hell natural color non-chill filtered and this bad boy is pretty dark i mean that's natural color that's you know this is one of their, um, I think there's only like 1,000 bottles of this stuff in existence. If I had to go back and look, something like that. It's just a flat sherry type cask. It's supposed to be like a sherry bomb. I'm going to probably expect something like an Abelau or Abana, even more intense, more potent. Hopefully not as hammering to the head as the Abana is notoriously can be because of the, I don't know if it's tannins or um, whatever, but there's something in there that makes it, and I guess probably it's because it's super hot. Uh, being 62.1, that's going to take a couple of drops. And Lee, if you're watching, sorry, man, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I've seen two reviews of this Tandu, and I've seen one that's glowing. It, it <coughs> excuse me. I didn't see, uh, you know, I didn't want to look too much into their notes to be um, lead, led in any way, you know, in particular. But um, just an idea of if it was positive or negative review, and it was a really positive one. And I saw another one that was extremely negative. <laughs> they thought it was uh, too hot and overdone and that kind of thing in general. So this is going to be interesting to take a look at. I think from just a completely new, I do like the Tamdu batch one, batch two. I haven't had their batch three yet. Um, I do like their basic 10. Um, I have reviewed that and gave it a, I'm sure it was at least a three, if not a 3.5 uh, for their basic 10 and their, their batches I've are close to fives, if not fives. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what this particular offering is gonna be. Uh, I've had these sitting out for a while. Uh, this is the glymphitic, and even though it's uh, colored, I mean, it's not super dark or anything. Nothing out of the ordinary, but yeah, I mean, it is darker than a, you would think an 8 or a 10-year-old would be, and this is not even an age statement. So that's, if you're going to use Aquavitae scale, the ABCD of whiskey scale, this one's going to have a lot of work to do as far as taste is concerned because we don't have an age statement. We are colored. We are chill filtered. There's three right now there, and the ABV is 40. That's your fourth thing. So all four, theoretically, according to that scale, it should not be a good whiskey if you're, you know, thinking of it that way. Oh, there's there's mom. <laughs> oh man. Hey T, sorry we ran over a few minutes. No, that's no big deal. Uh, Scotch for dummies. I, I I was watching and before I pulled the trigger, I asked uh, Cato if you guys were still running. He said you guys already uh, killed it. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and flip it on. Um, good to see you, mom. Hopefully everything's going well for you. And uh, yeah, Versace. That's yes, my my two favorite distilleries are Lafleur and Ardbeg. Those are my top two. I have to say. Bunnahaven is a close third, as well as Springbank, as you can tell, but those are my, definitely my top. Uh, and Kilhoman's is growing. I've got five offerings here, um, and I'm looking forward to, like, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> so it's just a matter of uh, getting um, my hands on, like, the cool point. The, the one's called Saligo Bay. It's not like my Cure Bay, it's a different one. Um, and they have some uh, whiskey uh, caskings that are particular to uh, this area. Uh, Impex, I think, is the name of the type of offering. Um, the port one, I do have a sample of. I don't have a bottle of that yet. Uh, that one might be iffy because I've heard mixed reviews. But anyway, I can go on and on and on. But uh, let's have a sniff of the, uh, the Glymphitic Select Cast. This is Travel Retail Exclusive, so... This, uh, you know, is typically going to appear like in a one 
liter bottle. Um, now, the, the interesting thing that might save the fact that the ABCD scale is all off on the ABV, the color, and the chill filtering, and the um, age is the fact that they do use three different cast types. That might make it interesting enough to, for it to be pretty decent. X bourbon, European oak, and X red wine casks. I'm getting this information from uh, distiller.com on the side here. It's a really good site for um, kind of having all your information in one bucket so you don't have to go looking all over the place for, you know, particular information about a specific whiskey. Hmm. Now, I'm not surprised as it is a little subtle as far as it's not like, you know, one of those power strength, uh, really nice, you know, super anything off the bat, but it's not off-putting. It's on the sweeter end. Really nice fruit slash uh, sugary sweet goodness. The first note I got just going into me was so was like a strawberry a light red fruit nothing deep nothing like a plum or anything like that but on a very light like a light strawberry some really nice vanilla huh. got to dig deep when it's only 40 <laughs> percent hey chad oh no problem i understand it's late um Definitely give me a watch tomorrow. Give me a thumbs up if you don't mind before you go. Uh, or uh, for people that are still sticking around, if you watch uh, later on, please give me a thumbs up if you uh, don't mind. And if you have a friend that's in the scotch that you think might, you know, enjoy the the just the camaraderie and the just hanging out, casual dress policy, <laughs> then uh, tell them to subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. Uh, I'm always looking for, you know, trying to, Spread the news. I'm looking forward to trying the Lymphatic uh, Fire and Cane. Yeah, Loch Ness. I, I, my local place does have that, and it was not expensive. So I might have to pick that one up on the side to see uh, what that's about, just as a different uh, side alternative. A little bit of spice, but nothing major. Um, like a, Not like a cinnamon spice, but more like a... Um, Mm. It's a mixture of like sugar and salt together. I'm not sure what you would call that, but reminiscent of like pixie sticks, Smarties, that kind of that kind of um, sour but yet more sweet in candy that's powdered, like powdered sugar. Huh. Try and get some more fruit out. Maybe some uh, some orange citrus, but dried, like a dried uh, fruit. Hmm. Uh, 40, you know, it's not going to be the most viscous uh, liquid in the face of the earth. Of course, it's going to run like crazy, which it is doing. But... Um, doesn't mean it might not taste good. <laughs> Hopefully, we get lucky. My mom says casual dress dudes and throws her off. She's going to get her ball camera. <laughs> That's my upper close over the past. Wow. <laughs> Batista got robbed by the Undertaker in WrestleMania 23. Where did that come from? <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, uh, I, I can't remember the last time I saw the WrestleMania, man. That was back when the Iron Sheik and uh, Hulk Hogan were still, I think, King Kong Bundy. They were going at it. That was like probably like two or three. <laughs> I feel old. <laughs> oh, my. Hmm. Very subtle on the palate, too. I would hate to touch this with water because it's so light. Hmm. There's some honey there. 
Wow. I'm digging for that red wine quality, and it's not there yet for me. I do get the woodiness the from the oak. The, the bourbon, I'm sure, is bringing out some of those sweet qualities, but this is um, looking at some of the, the more specifics. This was uh, released as part of their uh, collection of no-age statements. Uh, they're chosen by the malt master, Brian Kinsman, married together using their Solera vat technique after aging in bourbon barrels or European oak casks and red wine casks. The whiskey is bottled at 40 in exclusively a uh, global retail uh, travel retail. So Solera, huh? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know about this one. I don't know. I, it's a, it's a, it's a little dry. It's, um, it does have some nice dried fruit characteristics to the palate too. I mean, I think the apricots are coming through. Like I said, there's some honey in there, but um, it, it's 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 one of those drams that, unfortunately, it's it, to me it either it either has to be a complex enough to where I'm getting five, six different notes at, at a minimum, and I'm still getting more after digging for a while, or B, it's assertive in at least a sweet way, a spicy way or combination thereof, or um, some something that wants to make me take a more of subs and it's just not there. Hmm. A couple of drops maybe. I hate to do that at a 40%, but I'm trying to give it, it everything I possibly can. And it's such a dry um, palette that the finish is more or less like if you, like an army, like an MRI, one of those um, dried uh, fruit peaches, you know, that kind of thing. Um, a mouthful of dust, basically. <laughs> it's not good. So let's, let's, let's give it a, a drop, maybe two drops. You barely got two drops out of that. I mean, 40% is just, Lee would, Lee would freaking hang me by short and curlies. <laughs> it would be bad, uh, but I'm trying to rescue, trying to find something deep within that makes me want more, makes me want me to like it, you know. My mommy sneaks in the chat, goes weird. Yeah, I think they figured that out. <laughs> They're probably scared of you. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, I've never watched wrestling. <laughs> Who was the one that brought up the... I thought it was Kato, maybe somebody else. Oh, my. I, I'm, I'm lost in the... I'm looking up trying to find... Oh, it was Julian. <laughs> uh, maybe he's... Uh, Watching, uh, watching it live or something. They have it WrestleMania on now. Um, I guess twenty three is possible. Has it been twenty three years? Jeez. <laughs> hmm. Maybe a touch better. Maybe a maybe a smidgen better. Because for a forty, it tasted a little on the rough side, not not you know hot. I mean, because forty is hardly anything, but unrefined. It needed a couple of drops maybe to smooth it out a little bit. Now it's kind of you know on par with something a little more enjoyable, like a monkey shoulder type of thing. Minus the banana that you get off the monkey shoulder. Um, I don't know. It's to me. Um, I, I I want it to be sweeter, or I want it to be um, a little sweeter and spicier, or I want it to be, you know, 
have some maybe a little peat sherry something and i'm not getting that red wine that extra the red wine cask from it i mean i know it's supposed to be there but i am not getting it and i usually excuse me i, I mean usually i can dig out um every kind of cask i look for no matter if it's uh the uh, Doro valley from uh, kilholman or the uh, river del Doria from um Brooklady's Octomore or um, the Marsala cast from the Bonahaven uh, 13, um, well, you know, the, the port or uh, even the, um, some of the other uh, stuff from uh, Spring Bank. It's, you know, usually I can dig it out. This one is, is a little tougher to find and I, I just wish I had more notes on it. Because typically I can get, you know, some chocolate or some. There's some white pepper going on with it. But other than the ones I've already talked about, and extremely dry. Maybe that's the maybe that's the thing that's that's coming from the red wine, um, the cask. But as far as flavor, I'm not getting the. Um, not getting it. Not getting it, not getting it, at least what I'm looking for. Um, but you know, when it's not at least 10 years old and it doesn't have a, a 46 ABV, it's tough to find that for me in a lot of whiskey. And I like, I think a lot of other people like that too. So, that being said, I do my scales uh, to five and 0.25 uh, increments. So, this unfortunately is going to be in the lower end. Now I do, like I said, I do like. I'm not knocking Glenfiddich by any means. I like their Solera offering. I like their basic twelve. Um, I do need to try some of their other stuff. Oh, one one bottle I absolutely adore is the Glenfiddich 19 Age of Discovery Bourbon Cask. That my even though it's like 150, it is every penny worth it it's it is that good now don't look for something that's going to be completely crazy complicated it doesn't have 10 20 notes but the five or six notes you get out of it which is basically like a the best apple danish hot from the oven you'll ever have that in a glass is what what that is and it's it's, it's perfect i wouldn't change a thing really with with that uh this is not that but I'm sure the cost of this is a lot different too. This only has shows a, I don't think I've got a, pro, let me see if I've got a price on this particular guy. Probably not. Um, the Stiller started doing prices. Uh, oh, $34. So for 34 bucks, you know, I'm not sure if he's including taxes and all that mess for, if it's a one, is it, oh, it's, 65 for two liters is what he uh, did. That's not bad. 65 bucks for two liters. Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't seek it out myself like I would that Glenfiddich 19 uh, bourbon. But, uh, you know, for 34 for a one liter you know, it's, 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 if you're just going to go for like a Johnny Walker Black, Monkey Shoulder, uh, Holland Park Magnus, that type of scotch, if you want something a little different, that same, you know, similar quality, I think this would be good. The, the hardest part though is finding this because it's Travertile exclusive. You can't just go in any bar or any re uh, restaurant or liquor store and buy it. Uh, no ABV store, you know, no state run liquor store is going to have it. You got to go to, you know, fly to Hong Kong or London or something and get it through one of their uh, airport stores. So good luck with that. The only other way around that is to order it overseas, and that can get interesting depending on what state you're in. So uh, not worth the hassle to me if I was going to go local. And want something tasty like this, I would go for the Highland Park Magnus or, you know, um, something similarly priced, similar quality. But 
if I was a main, you know, main traveler, I traveled all the time, and you know, this was easy for me to pick up. Then for thirty-four bucks for a liter of it, you know, it might not be have bad to have around because uh, this would be really good to get someone in the scotch. I think if they've never tried it, you don't want to go for like Lafroy's well, hard bags right away. Um, and if a Dalmany fifteen is a little too light for you, then maybe something like this might be more, you know. Up your alley. Hey, Aloha from Maui, Dram. Can't stay. Cheers. Well, that's cool. I'll help you having fun, man. Uh, what you drinking? And uh, let me know in the comments if you've uh, already left. Uh, hopefully, something good. Now, speaking of, we're gonna go to the bad boy, the fun, the fun one. I should say here, um, and see what we got. Cause I am very excited. To go for this one. This one's going to be, I have a feeling, uh, really tasty. And thanks again to Paul for uh, being uh, gracious enough to, to share some salsa. <laughs> it's not easy to find this one at all. I think this is down to like 1,000 bottles total. I think they ever did. And uh, I am a big fan of Tamdu and the batches. So if it's anything like that, I think I'm in for a treat. We're going to go neat, as crazy as that sounds, at 62%. So hopefully we'll get lucky and uh, not be too overpowered. But uh, I'd rather add a little water than too much and ruin anything. And I poured myself, not a huge pour, but I poured myself something a little decent here. Let's see what we get on the um, Let's have a, first have a little cleanser. The good thing about starting with that glymphitic was it was so mild and, and basic that it didn't overpower my, uh, my palate in any, any way at all. So it was easy to start with that and go with something like this. Now this, if I was going to do something after this, man, it would be rough, I have a feeling, because uh, this is going to be a sherry bomb. I'm, I'm pretty 99% sure holds itself uh, its shape up really well. I mean, I could tell it's got a really nice, heavy mouth coat just by looking at the liquid. Uh, not chill filtered, not colored. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's strong, though. The first note I get is roasted coffee, like a really nice roast, like from some off-the-wall place in Ethiopia or... Uh, you know, the far reaches of the Andes or, or something like that. And, and then right alongside it and not, not clashing with it is some really good spicy notes like the cinnamon, Chinese allspice, even um, star anise. It's not too hot on the nose. Um, which is to me is so far, you know, a good sign. Now, I have had it letting it sit out for a bit, and I think some people that might give really uh, high-end, uh, cast-strength, high ABV, uh, powerful whiskeys a hard time, a hard review, they might not leave them set out for as long as sometimes I think they need. Um, this one is, is definitely ready. I can see it running, and it's got some good distance between the legs. Some really nice coffee mocha, dark chocolate notes on the nose too. Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. A little, maybe a little sulfur, but, but nothing off putting, not near as much as like a Ben Nevis or um, a Bowmore 15 darkest or anything like that. It's, it's really subtle. Kind of like a McCallum level, maybe a sulfur. Which, you know, it's there, but it's not in your face there that's going to, like, throw you up for a loop where you don't want to go in. Now, some fruits come in. I mean, this is a complex glass here. Some, like, big, juicy, like, fig and toffee and uh, Werther's Originals on the nose, even. Toffee. 
Let's come back to some more fruit, some oranges. Hmm, this is a nice nose. I, I can tell it is going to be a hot taste. Um, we'll have a sip and see where we go. Hey, uh, Scotch for Dummies, uh, let us have some pee. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to uh, get me uh, some more pee here before long. Uh, yeah, tonight's a, a, a peatless night. It's kind of scary, but I do have my sherry. And sherry is almost as important as pea. Now, for me, like, I especially like it when I have it both together. Like, if I can have a Lagavulin uh, uh, Distiller's Edition, or if I can have um, a Lechig 18, something that's got the sherry and the pea very well done together, I, that is what I want to have. Ardbeg Dark Cove, stuff like that is beautiful. Yugadal, of course. Man, I, I, whoever can get their hands in the glass of this, I think will enjoy the nose for many, many, many uh, hours by itself without even sipping. It is awfully roasted, though. On the uh, like that coffee flavor it is a little roasted. It's got some some slight bitterness, but I find it kind of actually intriguing. I don't, I don't. It doesn't turn me away from it but I can see why these one this one group thought that this might be overdone in a, in a way I don't think they're wrong I just think it's 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 got some actual please it's one of, you know ever you get one of those smells that you get into uh, and even if it's not something that you would think would be ideal that you'd want really want to smell it but it's so intriguing that you kind of still want to have a sniff like it could you know it's not like a bart from a scotch test i mean sometimes he gets into his like modeling clay glue stuff and we'll call it like bonding putty or something he he like i guess associates that with some childhood memory and it, and it gets him excited into wanting to have more of that that aroma even though it's not something you would you would ironically, you know, think that oh, I'm going to seek that out and, and try to get that. Kind of the same thing with the TCP iodine stuff from Lafroy. Uh, at first, you're you're kind of like, wow, this is this reminds me of a hospital, but I kind of like it. <laughs> and I think that's one of those things with this really, really heavily roasted, uh, almost like a child. It kind of reminds me of the signet from Glenmorangie. It's got that chocolate roasted, over over roasted kind of. Uh, thing going on with a really nice balance of fruit in the back too and uh, not too dark fruit not too light i mean we're beyond pears and we're beyond white grapes we're in like in the middle where you got all your nectarines and changerines and oranges and blood oranges and all that kind of stuff is is, is in that area <laughs> i am it's good wow Wow, sixty uh, two point one is no joke, but it's not. It didn't like. It didn't hit me that hard. I have had a couple of drams tonight, but nothing, nothing overwhelming. <laughs> that is good. Wow. It it, it can take a, a couple of drops, a couple. I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but I think this is good. If you don't mind having a little bit. I mean, when I say bitterness, I mean like slight, like just a hint. Uh, maybe like a grape. I'm, I don't like grapefruits per se, but that kind of level of bitterness, if you don't mind a little of that, that, like I, I don't mind some like mineral notes and long, as long as it's like in the back and it melds well with the other stuff going on, like the fruit and sweetness and the, uh, you know, stuff like that. And, um, I think you'll be into this. I really do. Now, how easy is it to find? When I was looking at price search, uh, I went to winesearcher.com, which is usually good about finding stuff online. Couldn't find the damn thing anywhere. And then um, I did a basic search and found it, I think, at a, a store overseas, and it was like 150 pounds, which is pretty good, pretty high at money. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, what is that, $200 to $25? Let's see. Uh, 150 pounds to uh, US dollars. 
193. It's a little pricey, but um, the only thing you're lacking on this is the age. You got your, you know, natural color. You got your chill, not you know, not chill filtered. You got a hell of a nice ABV. It's not out of the question because I mean, a bottle like the Lechig 18, you have everything but the ABV. It's like only 46, I think 40. 46 to 48 percent that it still runs like 150 so for 193 which is close to two i don't know man this is one of those where i think it's like on the bubble where it's it, it's almost worth it but if you had to pay for a lot of like shipping and all that mess if you had to pay over you know two I, i'd say no but uh I think it's going to be hard to find since they only made like a thousand of them. And Springbank does that a lot. They, uh, but they'll do a re-release. Like the Bourbon 14 was like that one year. I tried to find it, couldn't find it. I waited the following year for another release, and then I was able to get it. So, so I'm not sure if, if Tamdu does this with this uh, W. Lee Dram. Um, if they don't, they should. And I'm going to write to them and tell them that. <laughs> The nose hasn't like died on me. I've only put a little bit on there. Let's go in for another step and see. Ooh. It's still pretty hot, but really nice blend of the the very light benevis like sulfur, really nice oranges, apricots. Um, nectarines, tangerines, those kind of fruits. Not tropical, more spicy, uh, spicy um, Chinese allspice with the star anise, the cinnamon, the nutmeg. Um, not overly sweet, not overly bitter, not overly anything. It's, 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 it's actually pretty well together. It is a bit intense on the on the roast still even on the palate i kind of like it though i like the fact that the bitterness and the sweetness and the spiciness are all kind of coming together and i can kind of pick it out and uh it, it's not it's not bad now is it a five star dram no um i'm gonna add a little bit more water just to see if uh if it gets to even better because i mean starting out at 62 is is a lot and that is a lot couple couple dabs will do you and see if um see if that will um get it at that perfect sweet spot 48 50 percent thanks so much for stopping by everyone It's really good. The fruit's still there. The spiciness is still there. It's got some both white and black pepper. Really nice, like almost a dark chocolate in the back. It is a little bitter, though. It is more the, you know, it's not your 66% cocoa. It's like a little higher. Hmm. It's, it reminds me of a lot of a Longmorn 16. If you've ever had a Longmorn 16, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's a savory dram. It's got a little sweetness, but it's mostly spicy, savory notes that blend well together. And uh, I enjoy it. I gave it like a four out of five when uh, I was reviewing Longmorn as a distillery. And the 16, I thought, was, was pretty well done. It reminded me of one of those... Um, really spicy, um, folded, uh, um, not an empanada, but it's called a sambusa from Ethiopia. You, you eat it, and it's got lots of spices and uh, chickpeas, and, and I'm sure it's got some sort of meat. I'm not sure if it's goat or, or whatever, but it's got a really nice blend of, of a lot of different things, and that was what that dram reminded me of. And this is, this is close to that. But this might have a little bit of a sweeter edge to it, which makes it even maybe a little better 
Um, so I think let's go for a finish though before we we put a final stamp on it. Spicy, hot, but hmm. Hmm, and that the finish is, it's there. It's got some nice brightness to it, but hmm. It's so spicy that that overpowers, I think, any of the nice sweet fruit or the, you know, there's no peat to be talked about. So um, it does have maybe a little smoke in it. Some slight smokiness of some sort, but oh my finishes is short to medium. It's it's creamy. It's not dry, dry like that first one, the Glymphitic. This is more of a creamy finish, short to medium. I think overall, I'm going to give this a four point two five. It's it's solid. It's better than average, but it's not you know, up there in the 4.5, 4.75 and 5 echelon. It's, it's, it's kind of um, better than average, but not, you know, fantastic. But I'm not, I'm, I'm definitely not, uh, not sad to definitely try this. And I will be having the rest of this probably uh, even tonight <laughs> as I get to telework tomorrow. Yay. <laughs> so this will be my little, my little nightcap, and um, I don't know about this glymphitic. I might have to save this for guests that are new to Scotch, maybe, and say, "Hey, let me know what you think about this, and see what they say, and maybe find someone that really likes it a lot, and they can drink that while I drink uh, hard bed grooves or something else." <laughs> Is that bad? Uh, let's go with some comments here. Sorry, I've been kind of missing out on some of the comments but uh let's see any thoughts on another drink a dram that falls into that holland park 12 flavor profile holland park 12 um interesting that you say that because tamdu does have a basic 10 and cardu is another one i think it's a 10 let me see let me do a quick look up here uh, I want to say Cardi's a 12, but let me verify that before I tell you that. The Cardi 12, yeah. Uh, that is a space side. And the uh, Tamdu, I believe, is a space side as well. Yep. And the, uh, I mean, Highland Park is kind of its own thing because <sighs> technically, I guess you call it islands, which and what makes it kind of stand apart is because of that Orkney peat, which is specific to that region. No other scotch really has the same exact profile, but I think uh, a Talisker 10, if you're not afraid of peat, which uh, Jason let me know if you're a peat guy or not, if, the, if you lean towards more of the peat you're in, if that doesn't throw you off too much, then I would go for a Talisker 10. Uh, if you've got the funds, Talisker 18 is even more complex, even better, I'd say, depending on which, you know, but it's, it's got a lot of things going on. It's complex. It, you lose that kind of that peak young edge from going from a 10 to 18, but you do get the refinement and the complexity with the 18 versus the 10, but they're both great. It just depends on what you're looking for. Um, as far as uh, other profiles besides Talisker and Highland on Islands, Islands. Um, I've never, I think Aran, A-R-R-A-N, I think, isn't, aren't they an island distiller? I have not done a lot of their stuff yet. I, I don't even I can't remember the last time. Um, yeah, Aaron's an Islands type of scotch. That might be um, worth a shot. But it looks like uh, they have a ton of different offerings. Uh, I'm not well versed in Aaron or Aaron, uh, depending on how you pronounce it. And um, 
the 18 year looks like it does has a pretty good review on it uh but 18s you know can be pricey uh which this one probably runs you know anywhere from 150 to 200 bucks so that's kind of the only thing bad thing but it is x sherry it's 46 percent. it's 18 years i would give a guess uh, it averages you know four out of five when Reading, so it's probably worth a shot. Um, that's what I would probably try outside of uh, the Talisker and the um, the Holland Park. I'm trying to think of any. Uh, Campbelltown has got some nice, uh, I'd say, slight peat, interesting flavor profiles. Glen Scotia 15. Very well priced, you can get it for sixty to seventy dollars. It's a fifteen year Glen Scotia fifteen. I would definitely try that. Um, I think you would like it if you did like Holland Park. Um, Kill Karen twelve. That's a Campbelltown as well. That is really well done. Um, slight smidge in the peat, but mostly just a really great overall, um, you know, overall profile. Let's see anything else in the uh, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else in Campbelltown I would I would uh, send you to. I mean, in, in Springbank's, uh, their basic 10, I would say would be a good starting point. If you do like that, then go for the 12th cast strength, um, which is still 100 or less uh, for both of those bottles. So uh, those, I think, would get you enough into the island slash Campbelltown not quite as peaty as Isla, but enough to keep it interesting. That's that's what I would go for. He says, love the peat, but the 12 is like a perfect everyday. Okay, if you just want to switch it up, definitely go for the Kill Karen 12, uh, Glen Scotia 15, Talisker 10, or 18. Um, I think that will get you the money spot you're looking for uh, for the Highland Park 12. Um, and similar price points on all those, except the, the Talisker 18 is a little pricey, but the Talisker 10 is about the same um, as is the uh, other ones I mentioned. So if you're looking for leaning more towards something a little sweeter, uh, bob layers are really good. That's that it's not peated really. It's more of a, just a really nice, well done space ID kind of uh, sweet scotch. I like the bulb layers a lot. Uh, Glendronic, if you're looking more towards the sherries. Um, there's a couple of good tomatins I've had that are, are decent, but they're, it needs some age, I think, with those guys. Um, and Apple Hour, of course, for uh, some of the sherry or you know bomb stuff. But from what you're talking about, I think uh, you know, it's got a bottle of the Scotia Double Cask. Yeah, the Double Cask is good, don't get me wrong, but the 15, just for 10 dollars more i think it is of 20 at the most uh usually you can find it on sale right now the glen scotia 15 is worth the, the difference by far i mean they could sell that stuff for a hundred dollars a piece and not think twice about it and sell it uh just thankfully it only sells for 60 to 70 dollars um so i would jump all over the glen scotia 15 uh especially if you even remotely like the double because the 15 is so much better than the double it's not even measurable, um, in my opinion. Uh, the Victoriana is interesting. I, I like it. I just don't know if it's worth the difference of price because it's like $10 more than the 15 And um, I've never had their 18 so I'm thinking maybe it's better just to save and go in on an 18 than the Victoriana. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's pretty good. It's just The 15 is so damn good. And, the, and even the double cask is pretty good that it's not I don't know how well it fits in their their portfolio uh, I'm thinking that I might have to go for an 18 and see how that goes you know nothing like the uh, HP 12 out there but check out Glen going 15 yeah the Glen going 15 um, is uh, good I had an 18 on a review the other night really enjoyed it it's a uh, Got on sale for like 130. I think that the 15 is even a better price, probably closer to 100. And, uh, you know, it does, in my opinion, this is my opinion, it's, it's one more of a watery kind of an end, but there is nice flavor there. 
and it is a nice taste so i'm not going to knock it too much but uh, it's a little thin for me but you know i have had a lot worse on the taste uh, when it comes to a lot of uh, those types of uh, whiskey, so I can I can get by, I can stand behind uh, the reference to Glenmorey 15 as well. That's that is a, a pretty good uh, a try. You, they're not going to have the peat though at all. It's going to be a zero on the uh, on the I think the 15 or the 18. I don't remember any peat. It's just nice, really nicely uh, done sherry notes. Um, maybe slight smokiness, but very very subtle. Um, so I don't think you're going to really have to, um, have the same exact profile with that, but, uh, I would stick more towards the, um, Kilcarran and the, uh, Scotia slash Spring Bank because those actually have a little bit of peat in them to, uh, give it a little more interesting taste comparatively to like Ball Blair, uh, even though it's great, uh, Glen Goines, Glen Grants, things like that. So. Mm. That is spicy. Wow. There's some some borderline ghost pepper in there. <laughs> it's good though. I mean it's one of those it's one of those tastes that it's so different and so intense that you're like gotta gotta keep eating those, you know, buffalo chips or whatever it is. So in that aspect of it, it's um I'm glad I still gave it a 4 or 4.25, I think is a fair uh, thing. On this glymphitic, though, man, that's rough. I'm thinking like 2.5, something like that would be fair. 2.5. So there's a... Uh, there's the uh, the gist of it, and I really appreciate you guys hanging out. I do have to uh, work tomorrow, unfortunately. Boo. <laughs> so I can't stay up all night, but I wish I could. But it's been fun as usual. And um, I didn't get a chance to go to my favorite store this week yet, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to try to get a, a run in and uh, pick up a bottle and see what we can find. Uh, maybe a surprise uh, for the following week or an early show or something I'll figure something out well slant of all and uh take care see you mom glad you stopped by hopefully everything's going okay and uh thanks for stopping by uh, everybody else and uh give me a thumbs up before you go if you don't mind and uh talk to you uh if at the latest uh hopefully next thursday i was off on vacation last week sorry i missed you guys it was a kind of a Spur of the moment, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do a show remotely or not. And the, the internet connection was so spotty. If I tried, it would have been horrible. So I'm glad I didn't even, I gave Drew the heads up that I wasn't going to be able to do it. So uh, it worked out, I'm sure, okay. And uh, looking forward to another dream already. See you guys.